Hey folks, Mike and McGee here. We are getting ready to skin a Mangalitsa Barrow. He was castrated a year ago. You might ask, what is a Mangalitsa pig? Well, on the outside, he's hairy. Very hairy. They come over here from, I think it was Hungary many, uh, 10 or 15 years ago. And the US is starting to really like them a lot. Four different qualities, but mainly for the meat. So in this video, I'm going to skin this pig out and we are going to see what kind of meat we've got. We've been raising these things for about two years now, almost. This is the first one we've actually harvested ourselves. So we're gonna get into this right now and show you what the Mangalitsa craze is all about. Now, as you see, I'm, I'm skinning this critter out. I'm not scalding it. I don't have a real good setup for scalding yet. But the, the fact of the matter is you don't eat the skin anyway. The problem is you lose some fat when you skin it. So I'm using a small knife and I'm being very careful to try to save as much fat as possible so that we'll, we'll have that fat because that is some very good fat. It's a valuable fat that is good for a lot of things. I'm gonna just keep skinning this booger out I'm gonna do a time lapse so that it'll look like I'm skinning fast, but I'm actually being very careful and meticulous. had a major undertaking, a major thing happened. Uh, as you can see, there's a leg up there and no pig. I started hearing this thing tearing loose and I, I hollered to Joe to bring an ice chest quick and he brought it just in the nick of time. This whole carcass tore loose and fell down. I did not realize these things are so fatty, they cannot support themselves by one leg. Next time I do this, I definitely hang them by two hind legs, not one. I usually just throw a deer up one leg and I can do good with it, but it don't work that way with this. We had the guts out and everything and I've never seen anything like this pig. There's hardly any room for guts. It's all fat, completely wall to wall. His midland meat is that thick, not meat, fat and meat combined. I'm gonna have to thin it out so I can even make bacon with it. It's unbelievable. Can you imagine how terrible it'd have been if he would have landed out here on the dirt, boy, his fat would have been covered in it. Sure, I'm glad that my boy Joel has quick reflexes. He's able to get this out here for me. I want you to look how fat these midlands are. He had no room for guts in there hardly. Unbelievable. His midlands are that, that wide. I'm gonna have to cut all that interior fat out of there so I can make bacon with this part right here. All right, this is the next day. We just happen to have friends in high places that have really nice bandsaw for us to cut this meat up. The reason we want to use this is mainly for the pork chops, but I'm also going to slice these shoulders. These pigs are not normal, regular pigs. These pigs, the meat is just super good. So I'm not just going to grind up this, these shoulders and things. I'm going to make Roasts, of course, Boston butt comes from the shoulder. We're gonna make steaks. We're not going to just be using this like you would just any old pig. So I'm gonna get busy slicing these up and we'll see what this meat looks like on the inside. It's supposed to be super well marbled. Let's see what it looks like. Almost all fat. Wow. Slices like butter.
over 200 some pounds, ain't they? Yeah, they do not put on more meat. It's so weird. I, I learned that I used to buy big pigs and then all you get is fat. Yeah, is that the way with all pigs or just uh, well, words? No, I think every pig is designed to grow out at a certain weight. Okay. And then you get whatever's left. I'll tell you, we ought to have plenty of lard after this is over. And deer and, and sausage fat for deer. I'm glad you make your stuff at home. Well, thank you. All right, folks, now here is some pork chops. I'll show you right here. This is micro marbling of the meat. That is what mangalitsas are known for, the micro marbling and the, the major marbling. That right there is a pork chop that will melt in your mouth. If you ever get a chance to purchase a mangalitsa, I recommend it. It is some good, extraordinarily good meat. It's not, as you can see in this, it's not a gray meat hog. It's a red meat hog. To look at that cap fat. That is unreal. We'll have to cut most of that off and we'll freeze that to save that to grind with deer sausage and that will be good. sliced up. Now what we got to do is clean this greasy machine up. There ain't nothing greasier than a mangalitsa. We're going to clean this up. We're going to get onto the house. We're going to probably cook a little bit of this and do a demonstration about the goodness, the succulent taste of the mangalitsa. Well, we just got home from cutting that meat up and my wife has got mangalitsa ribs ready for lunch. And I figured it would only be right for you as my faithful viewers 
to get a idea of what Mangalitsa ribs are like. Now they have a lot of fat on them. I will agree with that. But this is pure meat right here. Mmm. And oh, so tender. See this meat? I can just take my fork and cut it with a fork. You don't need no knife. Better than Rib City. I can say that. Better than Rib City. Mm -mm -mm. If you don't know what Rib City is, it's a chain, I guess. A rib chain. Mm. I should stop this video and allow the rest of my family to come eat, but I think I'm just gonna keep eating on camera so they have to stand over there and they can't have none. No, I won't do that to them. The next scene that you see is gonna be us preparing these pieces we cut and getting some of the exorbitant amount of fat cut off. Boom. All right, guys, let's get to cutting. We got meat, we got fat. A lot of this is almost pure fat. And uh, go ahead and get the Ziploc bag, boys. Um, this is off of the shoulder. This is a shoulder steak, so go ahead and write chuck steak on it. And we will do that. David, I'll let you take charge of the fat. Go ahead and get you some a bag. Start putting this fat in it. I'm gonna cut it to where it'll go through the grinder. Frozen. I like to put frozen fat in with my sausage meat when I'm grinding, especially if I'm doing some summer grinding in the hot weather. I like to put some frozen fat in, put my meat in, even if the meat's somewhat frozen too. It's really good, it, it cools it down and so it's really a good thing to do, especially in our situation, we don't have uh, air conditioner. We live off grid. So it's good to have these plans. I gotta scrape off the bone dust. Sometimes we wash the bone dust off, but that ain't really a good, a real good way of doing it. If we wash it off this time, we're gonna end up with a sink full of grease, so not a good idea. All right, I'm gonna, I know this is gonna get terribly long. I'm gonna put this on time lapse so you can watch this work without having to sit there and feel like you're working. I wanna show you a chuck steak. Obviously, chuck is from the shoulder. We staked out most of the shoulder because we have a lot of roast and stuff. We don't need no more roast. Now this is a chuck steak and a half right here, folks. Marble up, I'm telling you. I just can't wait to get these on the grill. see fat comprised probably I'm gonna say a third or more of this pig now here's our steaks and roasts and here's our fat this does not include the bacon the hog jaw or the ribs those three items aren't here we are going to salt our bacons here pretty soon we've got to get the hog jaw salted and get ready to start smoking bacon but for now, this is what we've got. So we appreciate you watching, but this is really all we've got for you. If you want to grow a mangalitsa pig, this is kind of what you can expect to get if you grow it out for a year and a half. That's about how long this was, about a year and a half. And so we fed it a lot of trucker's favorite corn. And that was one of my experiments to see this fat. Now, we've been told that you don't use corn with a mangalitsa because it tanks the fat, makes it turn yellow or whatever. This fat looks perfect. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Looks as good as any pig fat I've ever seen. So I'm saying corn is not a problem to feed mangalitsa pigs. That's just my opinion. And 
I always love to go and try it myself and see whether or not what I'm hearing is true or false. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with this fat. It would make good lard, but we're not gonna make lard. We're gonna use it to make sausage because we get a lot of deer every year and they ain't got no fat. So we wanna use it to make sausage. So that's what we're gonna do. We appreciate you. We've got Mangalitsa pigs. Sometimes we have some for sale and you can hit us up if you wanna try to buy a Mangalitsa pig. Sometimes we've got some for sale. We have piglets ever so often. But other than that, we appreciate you watching this video. We appreciate you very much. We hope you have a great day. But we'll see you on the next video.